Hi everyone, it's Maylee here from Maylee Designs and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to go over part two of my love bug sweater, which will include the turtleneck as well as the lacy heart sleeves. With the back side of your work facing you, join your yarn to the center row edge of the neckline. Make one chain and work one single crochet stitch in each row edge across until you reach your shoulder. In the corners of your neck hole, where your back section meets your shoulder, you may have one loop that is leaving a large hole. If this is the case, pick up an extra loop below, just as I am in this section, and work a single crochet as normal. Turn your work on its side so you are now working along the shoulder. Work one stitch across until you reach the front panel. Repeat these steps all the way around until you reach your starting position. Slip stitch into your starting stitch to join. Next, place your work on your body. Measure from the start of your neckle up your neck to where you want your turtleneck to end. If you want more of a crew neck style neckline, I recommend making this only one or two inches long. Proceed to make a chain that is the length of the measurement you just took. Note the number of chains you just made. Make one more chain. While skipping your first chain, make one slip stitch in the back loop only of each stitch across. After you have worked in your last stitch, Immediately work two more slip stitches in the next two unworked stitches along the neckline. Turn your work and proceed to make one slip stitch in the back loop only of each stitch across while skipping the slip stitches that you worked along the neckline. Once you reach the end of your row, chain one and turn. You should have the same number of stitches as you had starting chains. Repeat this until you have no more unworked stitches along the neckline. Once you finish, you should have the same number of slip stitch rows as you do stitches along the neckline. Make sure to end with your yarn at the top of the collar. This may mean you need to add an extra row of slip stitches. Using the slip stitch method to join, insert your hook into the front loop of your current row. Then, insert your hook into the bottom loop of your starting chain. Yarn over and pull through to slip stitch. Repeat this in each stitch across until you work your last stitch. Slip on your garment and make sure that you can properly fit it over your head. If it is too tight, feel free to add some extra slip stitch rows. If it is too big, feel free to remove some slip stitch rows. Once you are happy with the fit, go ahead and fasten off. Next, we will be working on the sleeves. Switching to your 6.5 millimeter hook, or in other words, your hook that's one millimeter larger than the recommended hook size, Make a foundationless single crochet chain that measures the circumference of your armhole. When measuring your starting chain, make sure that there is no tension and it is relaxed as possible. Make sure to work a multiple of six stitches. This may mean you need to add or remove a few. Once you are happy with the length, slip stitch into the first stitch to join in the round. Make sure that your foundation row is not twisted. Next, we will be working the lacy heart stitch repetition. Start by making one chain. 
While skipping the first two stitches, immediately work one puff stitch with three yarn overs into the third stitch. Finish off the puff stitch by making one chain, and then make another chain. Work another puff stitch with three yarn overs into the same stitch. Finish off by making one chain. Skip two stitches and work one single crochet in the third stitch. Repeat this pattern all the way around. At the end of your row, you should be left with two skipped stitches and your second puff stitch. Insert your hook behind your starting chain. Yarn over and pull through both loops. This will count as your slip stitch to join. Next, chain 4. Work one single crochet into the space between the two puff stitches. Work two chains and work one front post double crochet around your single crochet stitch. Chain two and work one single crochet into the space between the next two puff stitches. Repeat this pattern all the way around. When working this row, make sure to work your chains with little to no tension. If you work your chains with too much tension, your sleeve will likely decrease by two to three inches. At the end of your row, you should be left with the chain two after working a single crochet between your last two puff stitches. Insert your hook behind your starting chain, yarn over and pull through the loops. This will be your slip stitch to join. Make one chain. For this next row, immediately work one puff stitch with three yarn overs into the first single crochet stitch. Finish off your puff stitch with a chain and then work one more chain. Work another puff stitch with three yarn overs into the same single crochet stitch. Finish off with a chain. Then work one front post single crochet stitch around your front post double crochet from the previous row. Repeat this pattern all the way around and slip stitch behind your starting chain to join. Repeat the previous two rows until your sleeve is your desired length. Make sure to make your chains for this section with little to no tension. It is recommended to check every few rows that the sleeve did not decrease in size. Make sure to end with the last row of your sleeve being a chain four, single crochet, chain two, front post double crochet row. Once your sleeve is the desired length, place your work on your body and slip on the sleeve to double check the length. Next, we will be joining the sleeve to the sweater. Turn the body of your sweater inside out so the wrong side is facing you. Take the bottom of your sleeve and slip it through the armhole and out the bottom of your sweater. Position your sleeve so that the start slash end of your row is in line with the middle of the bottom of your sweater. Now 
Insert your hook through the body of your sweater and pull up your starting loop. Make one chain. Align the edges of your sleeve with your armhole. Working so that your sleeve is facing you, work one single crochet through each chain two chain space while also working around the stitches along the armhole. Work another single crochet stitch through the top of your next single crochet while also working through the stitch along the armhole. Since you are using a bigger hook for the sleeve than you did for the body of your sweater, your stitches may not line up perfectly. Just make sure to keep your single crochet stitches loose. Continue this pattern all the way around the sleeve. Once you're back to your starting position, slip stitch into the very first stitch and then fasten off. Repeat the entire sleeve process for the other sleeve. Weave in any loose ends. When weaving in the ends attached to the bottom of the sleeves, secure the tail to the last stitch of your foundation row. Then proceed to weave in the end as normal. This will help close the gap between your starting stitch and your last stitch of your foundation row. Congratulations, you have finished your version of the Love Bug Sweater. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram for more pattern giveaways and pattern tester calls. If you are interested in supporting me and my ability to provide free tutorials, please consider checking out my Etsy shop along with the rest of my Valentine's Day collection that will be releasing within the upcoming weeks. And finally, I'd love to see your version of the Love Bug sweater, so please consider sharing it on Instagram and don't forget to tag me.